most people have looked at the virus and the pandemic and the pandemic response and the crushing slowdown on the economy and for that matter, policy change as a temporary thing. What you're describing is multi-generational. Yep. Why do you think you're, if not alone, in a small camp there, is it because the rest of the world just doesn't want to either accept or cannot conceive of the, of the consequences of what's, what's happening right now? I, I think it's because when you look at the virus, people want to look at, at the virus. Um, a, in general, people are optimistic about the virus. So, you know, we will get a vaccine in, in you know, Q4 and great, that's it, move on. And then when you look at the consequences, I think people haven't made the linkage between the policymaking response isn't necessarily linked to the actual outcome of the virus, i.e. the virus was a catalyst mm. was uh, that allowed an extreme change in a short period of time, but it's now taken a life of its own. Um, and so even if the, optim the medical optimists are correct, and even if the virus is not a major part of um, our lives over, over following years, I still think these changes will be borne out and we're not going from a policy perspective or from a social perspective or from a political perspective back to where we were. Um, and so I think for, for this to bear out, we don't need the virus to stay with us for an elongated period of time. Um, I think the horse has bolted um, and it's going to be very hard to be put in the box. And it's hard to put in the box because we've already let the political cat out of the bag. I mean, we've, you've clearly seen since the virus, these big social movements um, burst out and these were clearly conflicts that were already simmering under the surface and um, the environment of, 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 of the virus of quarantine has, has allowed them to bubble up. Um, and I also think it's, uh, from a policy perspective, it's very hard to put it back because fiscal policy, what matters is rate of change. And so if you've gone and you've blown a 20% deficit in your reaction, how do you put that back in the bottle? You can't go and say, virus is gone, next year we go back to zero. It doesn't work like that, right? For, for fiscal policy to have an even trajectory on growth, it needs to stay the same. So if we've had a 20% deficit this year, for there to be a zero fiscal impulse, I need a 20% deficit next year. If I even go down to a 15% deficit next year, that's a 5% fiscal impulse contraction. If I tried to go down to a 10% deficit, that's a massive contraction. And in this political environment, I'm not sure that you're gonna be able to tell Congress that they need to be writing hundreds of billions of dollars into trillion dollar checks to fund paying interest on reserves, um, to i.e., you're going to take money out of social security and pension education to pay banks. Good luck with that. <laughs> Three of the great trades over the past decade have been long equities, mm -hmm. long rates. Well, four actually, I think you could be long credit, right? Credit spreads compressing, um, and you could certainly have been short hard commodities. Yeah. What are the next? great trades for the coming decade going to be? Uh, if I look over the coming decade, um, I, think, I think we're gonna be in a, in a very different world. I think the risk parity world that you've, that you've essentially described um, is, is not gonna happen. We've, we've already brought forward all that asset price appreciation. And so I think it means your ability for the equity market to keep on having these gains is gonna be very hard because you've eliminated, you've already brought forward that, uh, that big dramatic move lower in the long run discount factor. Um, so you know, my, my expected return of equities of the next decade is, is zero or negative in that environment, depending on um, where that, where that long-term interest rate goes.